So one of the really cool parts of the demo which came very late on was when they handed the, the camera and the microphone to Sean Tracy to talk about the planetary tech that they've been working on, basically a behind the scenes look. It works on something called the Spacebox Editor and we started off in a similar place to Port Olisar, but this time we're next to a planet which could have been layer 3, I'm not sure, it doesn't really make a difference. Now the CryEngine terrain, the original CryEngine terrain, it has, has been rewritten because Usually it's to work with flat 8 km squared areas, not true planets. So it, they needed some spherical terrain, but on a planetary scale as well, because obviously it's got to stretch around the whole of a planet, which is to scale, that's the crazy thing about it. All of what we see during this demo is runtime, seamless transitions from space to ground. You can go up close and personal and look at the ground and it looks excellent, just like you see in Battlefront, or you can zoom far out and see it as a whole planet. There is no view distance restriction either, and they did just plonk a character down there to show the scale while they zoomed out, like we saw at the end of the V2 demo, when they zoomed out and you can just see all of that's going on where you have just been, is just a tiny blip on this planet. So one of the best features is that it is artist driven, but procedurally generated, so they can create more landscapes and then paint terrain on and it just does it there and then for them. As he paints it though, it does change all the ecosystem, you can see mountains popping up, they can just put in their hand, so they create a planet procedurally, and then they can tweak it as they see fit and add things or take things away that they don't like. He finds a place to build a similar location like we saw on Layer 3 where he landed. Now the planets are made up of multiple ecosystem chunks, and each can be modified on a macro scale or a micro scale, so it can be the, the grandest of differences like changing mountain and, and mountain ranges, or you can just tweak little things like we see, where we'll see later he adds a little crab. So first of all, he, this, this particular artist likes to add water to create a lake or a river. Again, they did rewrite the whole of the CryEngine water system. It wouldn't work for flat places, it needs to be spherical. Then he places an object container. Now this is a classification for objects, and they can bring in a, an entire level of content. The tower was very similar to the homestead of the V2 demo. Then he just places little objects around. Now the designer actually controls the placement of the objects, like trees, rocks, grass, buildings. And as this artist places them, they are procedurally scattered, so there is no repetition, which is just incredible. They did say a big shout out to the guys who have created the tools to allow this kind of creation, so we salute you guys. But in less than five minutes, a level was created, and he even placed a family of crabs. There was a big crab as well, so could that be a thing? Maybe like the Elder Scrolls missions when you first start off having to kill all the little rats. Maybe it's Toshu crabs instead for Star Citizen. So this allows for content to be created super quick, uh, but with an artist's hand to make sure that it looks great. Everything was pretty much done within five minutes. It didn't take long at all. Now the skylight, and he mentions, uh, is, is doing this because the light scatters as it should do. It is not some sort of small playtest where, you know, an artist has come in and created the sky. It is actually how it would scatter in real life with it being a spherical object and so forth. And, it, you know, the, the sun just looks incredible. All the planets you see in the sky and everything you see in the sky are not just backdrops either. They can be reached, they can be flown to... Now the editor, something great about the editor, is it allows artists who are working on it there and then to jump into the game and fly around without having to save, shut down, relaunch, and then open another executable. He just clicks a button and then he's in the level playing around and it flying around and it. it's so much quicker when it comes to creating these rather than having to save it and log out and then log back into the actual game version. Much, much better. He gets in the Gladius, takes off and then jumps to the planet which you could see in the distance. Now this planet is completely different to what we've seen, it looks like something out of hell. It is, it's just proving the diversity and the possibility of other planet styles. We have seen rocky, desert, snow-capped mountain planets, well pretty much all on the same planet with multiple biomes. But this is far more exotic, it's got sulphur lakes which he said would stink. It's got a dangerous atmosphere, very very super hot, but with a gorgeous sunset. And obviously the, these planets have natural day-night cycles because the planets are rotating as they should do. It is not like the sun is just being moved around. You are actually rotating on this planet. He found a little area where people were, have been mining, so people do work on this planet. I'm not sure what planet this is. I've had a look. I cannot figure it out. It could just be a test demo. But then he does a bit of formation flying with another Gladius, which appears to be Mark Hamill. And then they jump to where there's an Idris waiting. This could be part of Squadron 42. We don't know. But this goes to show how easily and how quickly they can generate and create these planets and environments without repetition, keeping them completely diverse and unique so that when you do go to a new planet, you're not just seeing the same thing over and over again, rinse, repeat. One of the reasons behind the delays in getting this game complete is the creation of these tools, which will, down the line, speed things up in development in the long run. So they needed to create these, these tools because 
Otherwise, they would be doing it the old school way. Things are going to come thick and fast. I can feel it over the next year. And I, for one, just cannot wait. Anyway, let me know your thoughts, guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button, please. And I shall see you next time.